It is Friday, and that means that it is time for challenge two of the Novice Driver Battle. For challenge one, we tested if the drivers knew where the front and rear bumpers of the car were. This time we'll test if the drivers know where the sides of the car are. This challenge is called Mind the Gap. Let's watch Sarah's run. This challenge is all about concentration and focus. You cannot be turning as you pass through these two rows of pylons. If you are, you will hit one. You can't take the turn too wide or too narrow in order to accomplish this. There was only one rule for this challenge. You must be going 25 kilometers an hour as you pass through the pylons. As you can tell, this is a timed challenge. If both drivers are able to finish the run, the driver with the fastest time will be the winner. Oh my god, that's scary. I guess I did make one small mistake with this challenge. I told Sarah that this was essentially a race, and I'm pretty sure at that point she forgot about the brake pedal. This was Sarah's second attempt. Her first attempt, she had a time of 1 minute 52 seconds, and she was trying to beat that time, not knowing what Justin would be able to do. Flawless. Man, I'm awesome. Oh my god. And she does beat her first attempt by about two and a half seconds. Each driver will get three attempts at this, so she goes to beat that time. Oh, good job. It's going down. You got three laps. Oh, you hit one. What the fuck? You hit two. God damn it! You hit both of them on the right side of the car. And just like that, her third attempt ends fairly quickly. Stupid pieces of cone! Man, I'm awesome! So, in the end, Sarah passes two out of three of her attempts with a best time of 1 minute 49 seconds. So, let's break down this course. It's a fairly simple figure 8 course passing through the pylons two times. There's 89 inches of space between the pylons. The car is 85 inches thick. Each driver will get three attempts, and each attempt is two entire laps. Let's watch Justin. This is Justin's first attempt at the course, and he is a lot less vocal than Sarah, so that gives me time to explain the course a little bit more. The timer starts when the car passes through the pylons for the first time, so if you hit the pylons on that first pass through, technically your attempt hasn't started. The timer stops when you pass through the pylons for the fourth time, at the end of your second entire lap. Justin likes to drive really close to the shoulder of the road, so before his attempt even started, I predicted that he'd hit a pylon with the right side of the car, but he hits a pylon with the left side of the car. He also doesn't realize that he hit a pylon until he swings around and sees it for himself. I think I'm like, oh, I hit a call. He did, yeah. So Justin's first attempt is a fail, just like last episode in the bumper to bumper challenge. Attempt number one. Justin's second attempt is nearly close to the same story. We did argue about it at the day, but in the end the camera did show that he hit a pylon. So his third and final attempt to just post a time for this challenge. You remember how I said you needed to take turns wide to be able to make it? Well here Justin swings inside the lamppost, but makes it. Justin wasn't told what Sarah's time for this course was but if he's going to beat that time, those are the kind of things he needs to do. He does drive dangerously close to the pylons a couple times. But he makes it, and that's lap one of four complete successfully. He just needs to make three more like that. Maybe he'll have a shot at this challenge. He takes the turn wider this lap, but still comes very, very close on the right side of the car. 
He actually thought he hit it. Is that cool? No, he didn't. Oh. <laughs> I thought I heard something. There could have been something in the car. It might have been. You didn't think I was going to do that, did you? Huh? Make it through? No, not a chance. <laughs> Going inside the sun, right? Yeah. <laughs> over on it. Justin dug himself a pretty big hole here. His first lap is already four seconds slower than Sarah's first lap, so he'd need to turn a lap about nine seconds faster than that one to win. He'd need help from Mormon Jesus or something. The first half of a second lap is already 30 seconds, so there's no way he's actually going to be able to make up that much time. Sarah's pretty much already won. Justin's speed through the cones is fine, he's just not taking turns nearly as fast as Sarah. But remember, Sarah didn't know that the car had a brake pedal. And Justin finishes with a time just over two minutes, which you'll hate to find out was actually a dozen seconds slower than Sarah. So Sarah wins her second in a row. Stay tuned next week as we tear it up in reverse. Oh my god, where am I? Wow, what did I do? Literally, tear it up in reverse. <laughs>